What is up everybody? Today I just wanted to make a short video about the importance of uh, maintaining good surface conditions for fruiting your bulk soap, your bulk substrate, right? In this case, it's uh, shoe boxes. Um, so as you can see, this these uh, shoe boxes are just about getting ready to fruit. We got Primordia coming in. Um, lots and lots of knots. Some of them are turning into Primordia and they will soon be pins. So, um, as you can see, it is, uh, yeah, the, sur the surface conditions are really, really vital, guys. I always see online, um, you know, on Reddit or some, some other website, you know, one of the main things that I always notice is how dry their bulk substrate is. And you could see it, you know, if they have fruits, it's very, sp it's very sparse. You could see the, the caps cracking, you know, or, or, um, some other indicator, you could see the stems blowing because it's just getting dehydrated and pushed inside. And and so like they're, you know, the mushrooms are, uh, what do you call it, oxidizing. And uh, you really don't want that guys. Mushrooms are more than 90% water and uh, they really, really thrive on high humidity and lots of moisture. And if you want a good pin set, it's not the only factor, genetics play a role too. But if you want to maximize your pin set and you want your mushrooms to be happy, you need to make sure that you maintain good surface moisture, right? And moisture of your substrate in general. I'll cover that in a later video. Once the mushrooms come out, I'll go over dunking or uh, or other methods to, um, to what do you call it, to hydrate your sub substrate. So uh, in this one, I'm just going to be talking about, you know, uh, surface conditions, um, how, how to make sure there's a very easy way to make sure that you have the proper surface condition. All right, so I'm gonna take a closer look here and show you guys exactly how it looks. Oh, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Look at that little primordia there. Right there. Probably gonna be a mushroom, guys. So this is uh, this is pretty advanced in the uh, fruiting process, or I should say it's about to be fruiting soon. Um, and as you can see, there's little water droplets, right? But there's there's not as much as you should have. That right there is a little bit of metabolite. Uh, little metabolite is no problem. It's completely normal. It's one of the ways of knowing that your uh, spawn is or your uh, substrate is pretty much fully colonized. Uh, another indicator, if you have a ton of it, uh, it that usually means that uh, you probably have a contamination that the mycelium is fighting. Uh, just a little side note there. So yeah. We've got a little bit of water droplets, but not as much as I'd like. Um, so I'm going to give this a nice little fine mist. And essentially, here, what I do, okay, I'm going to just quickly show this one before I missed it. All right, same kind of deal. Some water droplets, uh, but you could definitely use more. Mushrooms really like water. Uh, so here I go. I have a fine mister with a very fine spritzer. This is very important. You don't want big chunks of uh, like big beads of water coming down um, because well, you don't want to drown it. You want it to be able to easily, uh, uh, what you call it, evaporate. Because it's the evaporation of the water droplets that causes your pins to come. That, that tells, tells the uh, fruiting, the, the, the mycelium that, okay, th these are good conditions to release some fruits so they could sporulate. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go up high, all right? And you'll see now. I really want the water to just kind of drop on there. Now I missed it quite a bit. Oh, it smells lovely, guys. I wish you guys can smell this, but can't. But as you can see, look at that, guys. Full of tiny water droplets. Looking absolutely beautiful, guys. All over. And we'll move on to the other tub. Take a look at that, guys. See that? See how it's still water droplets? But it's not, it's not like uh, caked on to it. You know, it's not like a sheen, just matte layer of water. You know, that's way too much water then. Uh, that's why it's important to do it from afar and using a fine, fine mister. Um, so yes, what else? Um, 
yeah, I, I find I have to do this a couple of times a day, maybe two, three times a day. Um, it, but it really depends on the, your, your uh, environmental conditions, the type of tub you got. Uh, you know, a lot of techs say, oh, you know, if you got proper surface capacity, uh, carrying capacity when you spawn it, right, then you don't need to uh, worry about uh, misting at all until the first flush. And in my case, that is absolutely not not applicable. Uh, you know, it, it dries out really quickly. Hey guys, I just wanted to add in here. Uh, since I made this video in June, uh, I uh, came to realize why all of my grows in that room were just drying out so quickly. Not just shoe boxes, although especially shoe boxes, um, was because of the fact that I was always running an air circulator in there on the max setting, you know, day and night, 24 seven. And what that caused was uh, too much FAE, right, basically. So too much air exchange was going on. And shoeboxes, just by their design, get way more FAE than, say, something compared to, like, a monotub, right? Uh, it just gets a ton more. It's just the nature of the design. It's not as deep. Uh, you know, the substrate is just closer to the air. So that plays a, that played a big role. So ever since I've turned that off, I've had much better luck with... Um, you know, surface conditions, uh, not needing to maintain them too much. Not that I really uh, minded it all that much. Uh, and for certain species, having an air circulator on, at least with the simple text that I want to do, uh, is actually quite a plus. You just need to mist it more because some species that I want to cover on this channel, uh, you need to have more air exchange, more humidity anyways. And usually people grow them in like, um, like tent setups, you know, greenhouse setups. I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, well, you guys will see, right? Uh, and one way, back to the shoe boxes, one way uh, of maintaining even better uh, surface conditions, make it basically more of a neglect tech, right? Uh, to, uh, to ameliorate the problem of too much FAE in shoe boxes on its own is to basically put them in a monotub, line them up inside a monotub. Um, that's one system a lot of growers do. And uh, the positive of that is obviously, as I said, you get uh, less FAE. So you, there's a lot less you have to do. Basically, you don't have to mist if you do it properly uh, until after your first flush. And um, but, the, but the downside of that, the reason I don't do that is because to me, the reason I do shoe boxes is basically space, all about space for me. So that's why I stay with shoe boxes. Uh, so that's why I don't do the monotop method. All right, guys, back to the video. Uh, you know, I remember my first my first shoe box, it was very dry because I couldn't really gauge how much I should be misting. And I see, and that it's one of the things that a lot of new growers uh, miss, you know, the importance of misting and proper surface co um, conditions. So this is how it should look, guys. A lot of water droplets all over the place. And uh, of course, the way uh, fresh air exchange is also very important. These, these shoe boxes, no problem. I don't distinguish between fruited conditions and colonizing conditions, just as is, you know, with the lid on, you know, and clamp it down. Even with this clamp down, it's, it makes no difference, guys. I found it evaporates plenty. There's plenty of air exchange. So um, that's why you got to mist, mist it a little more. And um, uh, what, what did I want to say? Um, yeah, every tub is going to be different, as I said. The way the air, the water uh, circulates, and the water, uh, not sorry, the, the air, it's all different. So, for example, in this, in, the, in these shoe boxes, in this type of shoe box, I find that um, I find that the middle dehydrates, uh, will lose the water droplets a lot faster than the sides. The sides retain their water, which means there's more air exchange going on here. So you got to keep an eye on that. So sometimes I'll just focus more misting on the middle rather than on the corner. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to say. Uh, please message me with uh, your questions. I'd be happy to answer them, guys. All right, guys. Happy mushrooming. Have a good one. From Sage. Bye-bye.